Okay, here, here is lesson 3-8, which is on generalizations. A generalization is basically a statement that you are saying is true for that group of numbers that you're talking about. So if you're making a statement, um, like stating a fact about how to break apart numbers, you are making a generalization. And then they want you basically to prove it. Try that generalization and show that it works. So if we are looking at this worksheet here, the reteach 3-8. Three, three so if you're looking at the top part, 4 times 0 equals 0, 8 times 0 equals 0, 15 times 0 equals 0. What is the product of any number in 0? Yes, it equals 0. So you can make a generalization or a statement that is true that any number times 0 equals 0. We think of 0 as the most powerful number in multiplication since it turns everything into 0. Okay, so let's look at the distributive property over here. We have 7 times 4, okay? One of our numbers has to stay the same. So our 4 is staying the same. Our 7 is getting broken up into 2 and 5, okay? So we want to complete the equation. 2 times 4 equals 8. 5 times 4 equals 20. 20 plus 8 equals 28. Let's look at the next one. We have seven groups of six, very similar to the one up above. We still have seven. Our six is different, but we kept the four the same. Here we're going to keep the six the same, and again, we're breaking up that seven. So seven is being broken up into two and five, just like it was above. Now we work it out. and it equals 42. So we wanna look for repeated calculations in the equation. What factors were used repeatedly to break the seven up? Here we broke it up into, seven is broken up into two and five, and here we also broke it up into two and five. So seven can be broken up into two and five because we know that two plus five equals seven. So whether we're multiplying by seven we're multiplying that factor times two and then multiplying it times five and then adding them together, we're getting the same answer that we would. So generalization or a statement we can make about, about that number is I can break facts with seven as a factor into what and what. So what can you break the seven into that will get you the same answer? If you, if you have seven as a factor, you can break that up into a two and a five, or five and two, perfectly fine. There are other ones that would work as well, but two and five, definitely. We did it repeatedly here. We broke that seven up into two and five, into two and five. So kind of like a conclusion we can draw or a statement we can make is I can break seven up into two and five and it will work. Now. We wanna test it, we've made a statement, we've said this is true, let's test it. Let's test our generalization or our statement for other facts. We have seven times eight. Let's keep the eight the same. And based on what you said up here, your generalization, show me how you can break this seven up into two numbers, break it down, and then add it up. Pause the video and do that. Okay, hopefully you're back, seven. You either broke it up into two and five, or it could be five and two. Either way is perfectly fine. Two times eight is 16. Five times eight is 40. 40 plus 16 is 56. And you could have worked that off to the side. Okay. Write another equation that is similar to eight times five is equal to four times five and four times five that shows how you can break apart your eights facts. Okay, so eight, oops, let's do it with the blue. Eight groups of five. Our five stayed the same. 
and this eight we broke up into four and four. So on the back, I want you to write an eight multiplication fact. So it needs to be eight times something. So write, write a number there, any number. Okay, so now you need to break this up. Whatever this number is should stay the same. Oops. Should stay the same right here, right here. This one gets it, this one gets it, I get it, you get it, everybody gets it. Whatever that number is. Now, on the front here, they broke up eight into four and four. You can choose to do that. Sometimes the fours can be hard depending on what number you're multiplying by. So an eight, you can break up into four and four and that would be fine. You can also break it up into a five and a three and multiplying by five is a lot easier. So that is up to you. You can choose to break it up into four and four and you would put four and four or you can choose to break it up into five and three and that would still equal eight. I want you to then work that out and see what answer you come up with. Okay, I'm gonna try it with eight times two. Yours may be very, very different than this, but this is just one way. So if I put a two there, I put a two there, and I put a two there. So whatever number you have here should be the same in that second factor position. I'm going to choose to break eight into four and four. Okay, four times two is eight, and four times two is eight and eight plus eight is 16. Therefore, eight times two is 16. You could have also let's see, you did two here, okay. Whatever number you wrote here should be the same right there. You could have broken your eight up into five and three. So five times two is 10, three times two is six, and 10 plus six is 16. Okay, so that is making generalizations and then testing them to make sure they are correct. Good job, and I'll see you tomorrow.